Today's video is a very special entry. An interview with Jonah Loeb, the character artist responsible for many of the series' most notable creatures, armor sets, characters, and weapons. During his storied career, he worked on the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Fallout 3, 4, and Skyrim, before leaving Bethesda and acting as a creative and artistic director on a myriad of projects. To begin, I asked Jonah how he started off his career as a character artist. I started my career at Bethesda. I'd applied to them twice already, and when I didn't get in, I spent eight months at home upgrading my character art abilities by practicing, developing a new demo reel, fumbling my way through problems by forum surfing, etc. Then, when I reapplied, I sent my portfolio directly to Todd Howard, a trick that probably won't work today. I followed up two days later and he responded and sent me an art test to complete. After doing so, I was to translate a 2D image of a Fault Raider into 3D. I was given the chance at an interview, which I suppose went well because I got the job. Then I asked when he joined Bethesda and about his responsibilities on Fault 3. I joined Bethesda at the very end of 2005. My responsibilities were to model and texture many of the creatures for Fault 3, including the Feral Ghouls, the Mirelurks, the Death Claws, the Giant Ants, the Rad Roaches, the Aliens, the Yaogwai, the Rad Scorpions, the Super Mutant Brutes, the Super Mutant Armors, etc. I also created some of the non-creature items, like the winterized T-51B Power Armor and Shiny Stealth Armor. Very proud of those. Having worked on many of the series' most iconic creatures, I asked him if he had a favorite. My favorite creature that I ever made for Fault 3 were the Feral Ghouls. They just had so much personality. My favorite creation in Fault 4 were the Death Claws by a mile. But I'm also very proud of the Mirelurks, the Mirelurk Kings, and the Super Mutants. Afterwards, I inquired if he had a different process when working on different assets of a model. For instance, is his process of modeling a Death Claw's claws different compared to the wings of a blood bug? My process is usually the same, just sculpting like crazy. Different materials and anatomical assets require different approaches, but I take them on by a case-by-case -case basis, so I don't really have a way to evenly divide my efforts one way or another. Mostly, I focus on the anatomy and the materials, whereas a death claw has curving, striated blades for claws, ones that are rather scratched up, rough but also smooth, etc. The blood bug has to have very delicate, veined wings. The detail needs to be so much more subtle on those wings to convey a sense of light delicacy. Next, I ask how working on Fallout 3 and 4 changed his approach to character design. Fallout 3 really helped me refine my game art abilities. Before that point, I had very little understanding of workflows and pipelines, and had had only minimal experience in the industry, having worked only on Shivering Isles. Fallout 3 enabled me to get into the groove of the process and learn and make mistakes. Thanks to Fallout 3, I was finally standing on my own two legs when Skyrim came out. With Fallout 4, I had just finished Skyrim and felt that I was finally a master of character art, a novice level master at least. The characters I made for Fallout 4 were some of the best I've ever created. As one of the most experienced character artists in the series' history, I ask what he thinks makes a creature fit into Fallout's post-apocalyptic world. I think creatures need to look somewhat mutated at the very least, and they need to look like they've led a very hard life. Fallout is a hard world where survival is really quite a difficult thing, so everything needs to look tough and hardened by the wasteland environment. Content is cut from every game for a variety of reasons, ranging from deadlines to limited resources, ideas not fitting into the overall theme, etc. So I ask if there were any characters, armor sets, or creatures he's disappointed were cut. I tried to make a monster called the Maypole, which was a giant, 100 foot tall glowing one, which would stride around Fallout 4 with a group of feral ghouls running around its feet. Unfortunately, the scope was well beyond what made sense for the game, and the Maypole was never included. A massive glowing one roaming through the wasteland would have been an amazing encounter, and it's too bad it never made it in. 
Next, I ask if he had a personal favorite piece of art he's made. Not at all. Usually my favorite piece is my latest piece. Nothing stands the test of time. In my following question, I ask him about his favorite artist in traditional or digital formats. I truly have so many favorite artists, it's really hard to say. In this day and age, there is just such an ocean of talented individuals who I've been following forever, and I admire so many of them for so many different reasons. Usually my favorites are not who you'd expect, i.e., they are not people doing the same things as I am. I usually most admire folks who adopt styles and approaches very different from my own because I covet their abilities. Next, I ask what software he uses for professional and personal projects. For 3D work, I use ZBrush, 3DX Max, Topo Gun, and Substance Painter. I don't do much 3D these days, however, so I mostly focus on Photoshop and Procreate for painting. I then ask what advice he has for prospective character artists looking to get into the industry. Learn anatomy as best you can, learn the workflows for low-poly art, and never forget to create characters with interesting personalities, ones which engage the audience on an emotional level. Nearing the end of our interview, I ask what type of training he'd recommend to become a better artist. Practice. Drawing, sculpting, painting, etc. There are lots of different kinds of artists. I recommend picking up some skills you'd like to focus on, and then double down on working on those skills. Also, come learn from me on YouTube. Finally, I ask what projects he's currently working on and where fans can find his art. I just finished a huge book for Marvel called Marvel Anatomy. It's a 225-page compendium of over 60 heroes and villains from the Marvel Universe, and I visually demonstrate how their anatomy and physiology contributes to their abilities. Within the year, I'll also be launching a Kickstarter for my first ever totally original graphic novel. Folks can find my work at Instagram at IamJonahLoeb and YouTube slash JonahLoebDraws. You can find links to his Instagram and YouTube channel below, both of which I highly recommend. On his channel, he delves into various aspects of character art, creative exercises, and much more. Huge thanks to Jonah Loeb for this interview, and as always, have an awesome day, guys.